You've survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the Black Man with the Gun Show. I think we're episode number 583, something like that. And this week, at least the time of this recording, the Carolinas, north and south, are recovering from Hurricane Florence. Now, this national disaster reiterates what I've been talking about, about preparation. How many of you have had some medical training in addition to your hard and soft fighting skills? Do you know training is relatively cheap and you can use it probably more than your self-defense stuff? Could you save a life if you had to? This week, I want to ask you to search for somebody to give you that kind of training be it medical, first responder, or crisis related. Michael reviews the primary arms optic, and we banter about the storm. Last couple of episodes, I've been talking and asking questions. Did you care about small business and firearms instructing and the whole training thing? Well, I'm going to start a firearms training business series on YouTube. So look for that and subscribe when it's time. But before I get to the video, Going to uh, share with you a little bit of that this week. Talking about niche marketing, how important it is. Maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe you have and didn't know how it applied to you. It's going to be quick, but I guarantee you, it'll help. Had a rough week, actually. I lost my father this week, and I'm still grieving. The funeral will be this week coming. So those who know the words of prayer, Please pray for me and my family. This is the Black Man with a Gun Show, and I'm your host, Ken Blanchard. Please pause for a second as John Wayne leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you get a chance, go to blackmanwithagun.com and check out the website. Got a couple of new uh, affiliates there I want to share with you. One of them happens to be Ammo.com. If you want to save some money on Ammo, you can go to Ammo.com forward slash black man with a gun and save money on your first order. After the storm, after the storm, what's happening after the storm, bro? Uh, With me, I did want to talk about what to do in the event in your area when catastrophe hits what you should have done to prepare for after effects. That's a good thing. One of the things I've always said is make sure you have your first aid kit on hand and having your first aid kit on hand is if you happen to walk around your neighborhood or wherever you decide to go, if people are hurt, car accident or whatever, you're already ready to render some form of help. Something else you can do is of course, beforehand is get your water prep. So after the effect, you can sustain life until measures of everything getting corrected, coming forth back to how it used to be. And um, the most important thing I think a lot of people should do is take pictures of your house and everything you own, firearms, write down your serial numbers, take pictures of it for insurance reasons after the effect. So um, in the event. I like like that one a lot. Yeah. So. In the event, like the hurricane was to um, come through and destroy a lot of stuff and people had to evacuate and you couldn't take your 800 pound safe with you. Right. Now your house gets looted. Now you got the pictures and evidence that, hey, this is what I had. These are serial numbers, you know, and then let law enforcement do what they have to do. When you say first aid kit, what are you talking about? You're talking about a fat pack. You got a fanny pack. You got that big orange thing. Um, how's, How's your first kit, first aid kit look like? My first aid kit is literally the IFAC, um, IFLAC that I had when I was in the military. So the little pouch that went on my gear. And, you know, I just keep um, the tourniquet, uh, medical scissors, gauze, tape, 
um, neosporin, clothespins, the tubing, the rubber tube, like you can wrap around your arm if you got to give somebody um, some form of an injection to stop the circulation. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, surgical. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what mine has. You know, like if you go online and just look up um, medical kits, mm-hmm. some things get in depth. Like a whole backpack, you can almost – you know, perform some form of a surgical operation on the side of the road if somebody got into an accident, you know, all the way down to the fanny pack like you was talking about that just has like band-aids, neosporin, gauze, mm-hmm. you know, like little stuff, you know, and that, um, what do you think is enough? I don't think you can ever have enough, mm-hmm. but even a little can be a lot, mainly because of the fact a lot of stuff you do as far as medical, if you don't have it, you'll improvise. That's so, true. yeah. So even if you don't have a tourniquet, you can improvise by like using your shoestring or your belt mm-hmm. or the string off your hoodie, anything that can cut the circulation down to slow it down. So you don't bleed out. Um, if you need to make some type of a, a splint, right. Of course, you know, you can take two pieces of wood, like a fence, Mm-hmm. Um, break it, you know, or take a tree down or take your AR-15, break it down in half, and then use your belt and rope tape of some such, you know, and make some form of a splint. But, you know, you can improvise anything as far as medical, you know, but it's it'd be easier if you have everything accessible in a bag. I got you. Mm-hmm. So we haven't talked about guns not one time in preparing at or after the fact. So it seems like there's a lot of stuff that you probably should be thinking about as a first responder, as a good citizen, as a Samaritan to, to help out people after this. I mean, what could you find? You could find somebody that's uh, been electrocuted. You could find somebody that's in shock. You could find somebody that's been mugged. Uh, what's some of the other stuff that could happen after the storm? Um, people can get trapped inside their house. Mm. tree can fall on your house and what tree falls on you and you can't move um in the event like you try to leave in the event of the storm you get down the road and mudslide flood you know or the road just caves in it can be anything you know messing with nature the possibilities are endless but Mm -hmm. you really don't want to go that route you know messing with mother nature on the opposite end of of the spectrum I got you. So what did y'all do up there in the Maryland, D.C. area in preparations for if the storm was to take the northern route, hit land and come north? Well, without any real prep, um, first thing I did was trying to get my roof and my gutters cleaned. And I took some trees down that were leaning toward the house. But it was almost an accident that happened so quickly. I mean, it was like I need to get these trees cut. So it happened right before they talked about the storm. So it seemed like I was proactive, but it was just a coincidence. But I'm I'm glad, though, because um, the trees, man, trees are taking people out now from all the rain that we've had since like April. They're just falling. Uh, the, all the leaves are heavy. The, the limbs are heavy. So trees are just falling out, out people's yards into the street. It happened today. The sun is shining and had two roads closed in two different parts of Washington, D.C., uh, ro- uh, trees just fell, one on top of a car. So it's kind of funky that way. Here, I kind of keep um, some water. I got like some potable water. I got some some water I just keep for utility stuff to run the toilets if the power goes off or the plumbing's funky. New batteries. Luckily, this time of year, it's not even cold or hot. So if uh, the power were to go off for a minute, the windows we can do all right we won't suffocate up in here if it was in earlier in july not cold enough to to warrant the heater yet so this is like the best part this is the best time of year to have a bad storm actually because nothing's uh intense on one way or the other food wise we got plenty of crap that uh, we can warm up or cook out on the grill once the rain slows down a little bit if the power were to go out again i've had it happen though on a on a good day when the refrigerator just dies and you have to put everything into your coolers. Luckily, I have quite a few because I'm a fisherman. So I have these giant 48 plus quart cool- coolers that I uh, throw all my stuff in there. And it holds it for about a day and a half. 
Is it Yeti? You got a Yeti cooler? Nah, these are cheap uh, Walmart jobs. Well, supposedly those Yeti coolers, you can put ice in them and the ice will stay solid for like five days in those coolers. Supposedly. That's what somebody told me. I don't have, I, I'm like you. I have the old igloo and yeah, uh, that's the styrofoam. The, um, tons of them igloo, igloo jobs. The boat that I was number on, they usually have the, the giant maritime igloos in the back. And I think still, stuff still melts. I think I think it's just it depends on the day and the heat. Some stuff, man, just has good reputation. Don't mean it's any better than anything else. I don't think ice will melt. There's a, like a way to keep that thing going too. Like if you let the water, water holds the temperature longer than whatever. So sometimes people want to like dump their stuff out. But if you put it in uh, plastic, that'll keep the cardboard stuff from getting soggy. And there's some there's kind of some ways you can just kind of put trash bags on on certain things and keep the the, the glass parts and other pieces, the stuff that's frozen, frozen that you've never used for like a hundred years, that becomes your ice cubes for later. Um, you have to stack your your coolers the right way. You just can't throw stuff in there. If you put, if you pack it right, it'll actually hold better. And then of course you don't open that thing up. You say, all right, this is my frozen, frozen. I'm gonna leave this thing closed. It will last. So let me ask you this, and I never really thought about this until now, when since we're having this conversation. Can you actually use dry ice to keep your food cool? Oh, in, yeah. In the event of a cooler and it doesn't damage the food in any type of way? You can freeze a burn if it touches it. Uh, right. It's colder than ice, a lot colder right. and more, more expensive and harder to get. But it just evaporates. It doesn't leave any dust or anything. It's just like poof. It's gone. It's in smoke. I've never used it for storage. So only a few times I used it was to make a, a Halloween punch. So I can have uh, some fog coming out of the top of the thing. Yeah. Now I wonder if you can actually use it with regular ice. Would it? Would it hold it more? Correct. Probably so. It's a lot colder. I know that for a fact. Right. It, it would definitely burn your meat. Came in contact with it. You'd have to separate it. Have it like compartmented, I guess. Put it on the bottom, or or actually put it on top because cold goes south. Yeah. So it, it, pack your thing and then you put that on top. Yeah, the only um, only involvement I ever had with dry ice was in science, and I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So that was the last time, only time I ever dealt with dry ice. Shoot, the last time I had it was a Halloween party, probably back in 84. <laughs> Good Lord, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I was breakdancing in 84. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... um. Outside of prepping, and we talked about this um not too long ago, but a go bag in mm. the event of, right? So do you have something ready where you could just grab and get out of the house in less than five, 10 minutes? No. What I got is a room full of stuff that needs to go in that bag. If I had enough time to think about it, I got like a, a container that's packed full of different things mm. i have to go shopping in my little room and throw stuff in there then go out so i need more than five or ten minutes if i had a half hour i'm good my wife was making a joke about somebody who bought a um what do you call that that bag with the the water it's like the mule you can put like little, has a little tube on it oh so, you're talking about the camelback yeah yeah she was talking about somebody who was she was joking somebody who had went and bought, bought a camelback and said uh they were preparing for this thing by getting a camelback and i just thought uh, I got two. Um, you don't even know. And she started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my go bag, and I shouldn't do this, but I do it anyway. But whenever I go to the range, I carry my go bag with me. That makes sense. Yeah. But also pretty much whenever I leave my house, my go bag goes with me because the eye flak is attached to my go bag. But inside that go bag, you know, I have um, like my old Gore-Tex jacket and wet weather pants from the military, knee pads, and then oh, I have um, you got real two stuff. pair. Of, yeah, so I got two pair of pants and Ziploc bags, two shirts, three pair of socks and Ziploc bags, a couple pair of underwear also in the Ziploc bags, um, magazines loaded in there. The only thing I don't have in my go bag that I should have in my go bag is batteries. You know? Yeah, but they, you always got to swap them things out. Um, exactly. 
So it'll but, hold hold a charge for crap if, if it's hot anyway. Yeah. So my whole thing is if the zombie apocalypse did happen, that wherever you go, I can find batteries. Yeah, you know? so, that's true. But but best case scenario, you can always get um, rechargeable batteries, and then hopefully you can find a power source to charge them up. One one of the things I did buy that I really like is uh, I don't even know what you call them things, but they're um they're the rechargeable battery packs for your cell phone. It has like two USB ports on it. Yes, and uh, I bought them for when I when I go to conferences and conventions because there's never enough plugs to charge your phone. But there's so many things that use the USB that uh, you can. It has a little weight to it, but you throw that thing in somewhere and forget about it. Um, it comes in handy when you got to recharge that phone or uh, a couple of different lights that I have that work with the USB. Yeah, I was looking at getting one. I went to Best Buy maybe two or three weeks ago, looking at them, mm-hmm. getting different price ranges on them and trying to figure out which is the better to get. Yeah, I, I got mine off of Amazon. Sometimes you can go to a dollar store and they have those ones that are like by the register that are really, really small. That mm-hmm. I don't recommend those at all. Uh, you do get what you pay for. Right. Most most of the ones I think that work the best have a little weight to it. If it um if it feels kind of heavy, the the two that I have hold a charge for like a day. I mean, I've charged my stuff and phones recharge 100% and this thing is still kicking. I've had one I haven't charged in probably a month and it still it still holds its charge like a, like a full battery. So it's kind of cool, but I recommend them because since we rely on these phones for everything. And then if you have that with a um, rechargeable DC thing for your car, then you can make sure that your car recharges all your portable electronics. Electronics is a, is a monster now. I mean, it's like, if you don't have your stuff connected to something, you're like, you're really in the, in the boonies. As soon as you can talk to somebody, you're not that far away anymore. So Think about um, these those extra external power batteries and uh, getting one of those DC thing chargers for your car, so that you can, while you're driving, sitting in the parking lot somewhere, you can run your laptop or something else just temporarily. Again, everything's only for like a few days. It's not not going to be RVing, living out there. It's just to uh, that one or two hours or six hours when you could be without power. You don't want to be that person. Yeah, but that goes back into that whole survival we had talked about beforehand. Like mm-hmm. if the power does go out and if you don't have the means to recharge your phone, some people will lose their mind or yeah. they just insanity is going to kick in because they can't survive without that technology. <laughs> yeah. You know. So if you're having some problems, if you're having some flooding, if you're having some preparation stuff, if you Got some tips for us that we can share next week. Uh, make sure you send it to us at blackmailthegun at gmail.com. And I'd love to get your take on it. Or if you want to call and actually leave your voicemail, uh, you can call the number. What is my number? I haven't used that thing in a minute. It's uh, 240-623-7200, I do believe. And uh, that number is a voicemail. You can call and I'll take that message and put it on the show. You want to tell me how you prepped for it, how you uh, did it. I'll leave the number again in the show notes just to make sure I wasn't talking out of school. It was uh, 240-623-7200. I do believe it is the correct number. All right. And here's our eight points in case you didn't catch those. The importance of a first aid kit. How about photographs of your guns, inventory for insurance, having water. Having coolers that can replace your refrigerator temporarily if you had to store something. How about a go bag? And we're even talking about dry ice a little bit. How about an external battery for your cell phone? And having a DC charger that you can put in your cigarette lighter for your car to power other things. Maybe you have a car parked close, you can use it use as your generator temporarily. Just a few things. I'm hoping that you got more out of it. Let me know. Then I left my number there too for you to call me if you had some good stuff or if you don't want to call. Email a brother, blackmanwithagun at gmail.com. 
MarylandShallIssue.org. It's an all-volunteer, nonpartisan organization dedicated to the preservation and advancement of gun owners' rights in Maryland. It seeks to educate the community about the right of self-protection, the safe handling of firearms, and the responsibility that goes with carrying a firearm in public. MarylandShallIssue.org. This is the group, your group, the grassroots group in the state of Maryland. Join us, no matter where you are, MarylandShallIssue.org. A few years ago, a friend of mine started this thing called the United States Concealed Carry Association. It's an education, training, and self-defense insurance company now. It's for responsible gun owners. You can get complete peace of mind when you join USCCA today. If you carry a gun for self-defense, you need this. It's a whole package, education, training, and self-defense insurance. Call my friend. The number is one 488 8353 And if you missed that, go to the link at blackmailthegun.com for USCCA. All right, Michael's up next for a review of some optics. Welcome to another Tips and Review segment. I am Michael Woodland, and today we're going to discuss the Primary Arms ACSS Raptor Scope. Not that long ago, we discussed a segment on the AR-15 variant rifles. I want to revisit that for a bit and talk about the rifle scope that will work for those who are new into shooting or those who are seeking a quality product but on a budget. If you happen to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, then you know I'm talking about the Primary Arms ACSS Raptor Variable Optic. This will be a two-part review with the second part coming out in a few weeks. Since the raffle of the Bushnell Variable Optic that I had on my rifle, my search went out to looking for something that is practical but also could suggest for the everyday shooter to get their hands on but at the same time, something that is dependable and will not break the bank. My search led me to the company of Primary Arms, and after talking to the developer of the reticle system, I was kind of hesitant about the product. Remember, all my shooting had some form of a reference point on the glass that takes the guesswork out of distance and measurements. Even if you do not get behind the glass after a set amount of time, like six months, So Dimitri and I were discussing the ACSS Raptor variable optic and he convinced me that the 1 to 6 by 24 variable optic from Primary Arms will be able to handle what you throw at it. A few days later, I got the scope and mount, assembled, and ensured everything is together to take this optic to the range. Lo and behold, this scope was easy to use as our discussion. I even took a friend of mine out to the range with me who has no real experience with rifle shooting and gave him a mini class on the optic to see how he performs. In the end, you could take an okay shooter and have those looking like a superstar using this scope from Primary Arms. Let's talk about what this scope has to offer for those who are interested. This optic weighs in at 17.6 ounces. The ocular focus ring is at the rear of the scope to allow for you to adjust for parallax. It is a variable optic magnification with the minimum magnification being 1 and the maximum magnification being 6. And the ease of the ring to get you to your desired magnification is smooth and consistent. Now, to mention about the magnification, for what you get with this scope, it is the closest I've seen any scope come to one power magnification. And that says a lot about the dedication they put into this scope. Moving on to the turret features, there are three turret knobs following the model of traditional scopes where the elevation dial is on top. The windage dial is on the right. Since this optic is illuminated, the dial on the left is where you can control the varying settings from zero being off to the numbers going from one very lightly illuminated to 11 being the full power of illumination. This scope comes with two CR2032 batteries, which one is in the outer cap along the side of the illumination setting, and the spare is resting in the turret cap for elevation. 
The click value for this optic is set to be a quarter MOA for both the elevation and the windage. From what I experienced on the range, the values per click are pretty spot on. The total adjustment value you will get out of this optic is stated to be at 50 MOA for elevation and 50 MOA for windage. The tube diameter for this optic is at 30 millimeters, which is pretty standard for this type of optic, which houses the ACSS Raptor 5.56 first focal plane. The objective diameter is 24 millimeters, but this optic is not compatible for night vision, unlike its sister model, that being the Platinum model. Let's talk a little about this optic's reticle you will see. Remember, I stated that you can take an all right shooter and make them a superstar with this system. The triangle that is displayed serves two parts. The aiming point for 100 yards is the top tip of the triangle. Now, moving on to the aiming point for 200 yards is the tip of the inside of the triangle or the bottom point under the top tip. Easy, right? Now, it gets even easier. The top of the stadia line is where you will aim for distances of 300 yards. Each corresponding line you will see is the distance from 400 yards to 600 yards. If you are still with me and not overwhelmed, let's talk about ranging and shooting out to distance. When they did the setup and measurements for the scope, they used the numbers from military doctrine to assist for the formula. Basically, what I'm saying is this. Your average height male is about 5 feet 6 inches. The average distance from shoulder to shoulder is is 18 inches. If a human target is at the measurement we talked about, you will then put the triangle on the shoulders of the target, and it is measured that the target is at 300 yards away. How easy is that? It gets even easier. If you take the horizontal line at the 400-yard measurement and line it up to the same human target that we were just previously discussing, and the bar fits snug between the shoulders, now you know that your distance is at 400 yards. The same process will take place for 500 yards and 600 yards. I can't see the smiles on the faces of those who are listening and understand that they do not have to do any math in your head to get your shot on target. And now all the work is done on the reticle. The big horseshoe is a tool in the reticle that can work on moving targets. We already know the average human can run about 8 miles per hour with a firearm in their hand. When your distance is from 100 to 300 yards from the target, you focus on a stationary point, and when the human target touches your horse ring, you will pull the trigger, and the bullet will meet your target. But wait, there's more. If you turn down to the one power magnification, you have it illuminated, you have just essentially made your optic into a red dot. A tool for quick transition for closer target accusations. There is so much more you can do with this scope, but we're going to have to cover that in the follow-up segment. This first focal plane scope brings a lot to the table for those who are just looking to shoot for the weekend to those who are very serious with the various competitions shooting has across the board. This is something to blow your mind if you never heard of the company Primary Arms, this optic comes in at $399. A well put together scope that is comparable to the higher end scopes that are costing three times that amount. The scope that I am shooting is the first focal plane, but if you desire a second focal plane scope, you can get that as well. The optic I was shooting is measured for rounds in caliber 5.56, 2.23, 5.45 by 39 and the 308. If this is not a way to introduce more people to mid range action with an AR 15, I do not know what to tell you. When we come back for the second part of this segment, we will be showing the simplicity of use in relation with this optic at distance. Back to you, Ken. This portion of the show is sponsored by CrossbreedHolsters.com. Crossbreed Holsters has gained national recognition as a maker of the best and most functional concealment holsters available on the market today. 
Each holster is handcrafted to ensure your firearm is safe and secure while carrying, combined with the best customer service in the industry. Visit CrossbreedHolsters.com. Hopefully sometime this week, you will see a video called My Firearms Business Training Tips. It's a new part of Black Man with a Gun. But I'm in between uh, Barry and my dad, so time's going to be a little funky. I'm trying to get this thing out. My first tip for business owners, for small business in the Second Amendment community, is that your riches are in the niches. Now, some folks call it a niche or a niche. But here's the key points. Everybody is selling something. You have to specialize in this crowded world to make a difference. There is power in the niche. There's only one you. And you know why that's a good thing? Because you can offer something different, even if you're selling the same service or product as everybody else. You don't have to just be different. You have to be different for the better. Focus your business allows you to solve certain problems for specific people. You can't do everything for everybody. Women's shooting groups do well. Why? Because they're focused on women. It's that simple. If you want to separate yourself from everybody else, be unique. Remember, I said you have to solve a problem. If you go into business and you're not solving a problem, then you're wasting your time. Niche marketing makes it easier to define your target audience. So you'll know where to find them. Target ID is important when you're shooting and when you're making money. Grandma says if you chase two rabbits, you'll miss them both. Focusing also allows you to tap into a more loyal and engaged audience. Don't think it's just going to be social media. Create a website, do a blog, a podcast, Instagram account, and then people will come. Uh Uh-uh. That's not it, actually. Don't let anybody steal your money over that. There are people in business just to make money off of people who are in business. How do I know that? Because I bankrupted my family chasing their dream. So that's first tip number one. You'll see a video about this. And if you join my mastermind group, you join my consulting deal, then you'll get an in-depth study on that to help you pull out what's the best that you can do. That's what I'm offering now. I'm going to have it so you can discover the secrets for turning skeptics into students and students into your evangelist. I want you to learn how to stop wasting time and money with those who will never take your training and identify quicker those who will. I want to improve your communication skills and your ability to influence others. That's what it's all about. I've learned a lot in the last 20 years. and I want to share it with you. But this isn't for everybody. If you're interested, email me at blackmailthegun at gmail.com and I'll give you details. Remember, there is power in the niche. Need some ammo? Check out ammo.com. It's your best source for ammunition online. The shipping is fast, the customer service is good, and they sell name brands you can trust. Ammo.com And if you'd like saving money as much as I do, use the link ammo.com forward slash black man with a gun. How cool is that? Did I hit it? Ammo.com All right, man. Final thoughts um, for this week. Only thing I got far as final thoughts is, you know, just like I've always said, when you go out to the range, make sure you're safe, keep it safe, but at the same time, have fun. And, you know, by doing so, ensure that everybody around you is doing the right thing, even when nobody's looking, you know, keep your eye pro on, um, get your air protection, you know, follow the range rules. If it says no shooting a rifle in the handgun bay, don't shoot your rifle in the handgun bay. You know, keep it simple. Um, If you haven't done so, go download the Black Man with the Gun app and catch up on the past shows you haven't caught up on or that shows that you missed. You know, if you want to give me a call, give me a call at 803-250-1256. If I don't answer, leave a voicemail or a text message. And I've already had about 50 so people call me just to check up on me to make sure I was okay for the storm and if I needed anything. Nice. Yeah. Everybody who called or texted me, I do appreciate it. And thank you for looking out for me and caring enough to check up on me. You know, so. um, We do got the best audience out here. 
Yo, I do believe that. I seriously believe that. <laughs> um, also, for those who are interested in looking at me doing my product reviews, you know, on video, every Tuesday I put a video up on YouTube, GunTube, and OochTube under M-W Tactical. So head over there and subscribe and like and tell me what you like or what you don't like about those videos. If you're on GunStreamer, you can find me under Munitions Weapons Tactical, the same video, and just give me a heads up. Tell me what you think. And if you haven't done so, look me up on Facebook and Instagram under M-W Tactical. Follow my adventures and let's have a conversation. Let's get it going. But the last thing I want to talk about is our campaign for the GoFundMe. And that um, you can go visit GoFundMe.com forward slash M-W Tactical and help us raise some money with this campaign we started to get three deputy sheriffs into some jiu-jitsu training at no cost to them or the department. Right now, we raised the funds to get one officer into training, but we're also looking to get at least $3,000 by October 1st to get the other two sheriffs into training, right? All together, we're looking to raise $10,000 so we can also purchase um, some 22 long rifle pistols to start a summer youth camp and also get people out to vote. So if you want more information on that, go visit GoFundMe.com, M. I'm sorry, GoFundMe.com forward slash M-W Tactical and help us get to that goal so we can say the people actually got this campaign going. You heard them, yo. All right, man. Thanks very much. Ah, uh, No problem. Let's do this um, next week. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. That's it for this week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the podcast. And if you would like to support us, go to Patreon.com forward slash black man with a gun. I'm hoping that you will take heed to some of the stuff that we talked about and search out your own preparation stuff and uh, maybe even check out some medical and first responder training. If you're interested in improving your business, I would love to be your coach. Send me an email. Remember at black man with a gun at gmail.com. Almost a year ago, I started working out toward uh building an internet church, basically a church with our walls. I call it the Speak Life Church. We just got uh, our 501c3 creds from the IRS. So uh, I guess we're legit. Those who pray, those who believe, I ask that you would pray for the continued blessing of the church, that I would use it to the help of the kingdom, that I would be a blessing to those who are seeking it, and um, that we do what God calls us to do. Check out our podcast at speaklifepodcast.com. Just in case nobody has told you this today, I love you. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next time. Shalom, baby. <laughs>